Hello, everyone. For those of you just joining us, welcome to the Radical Exchange Annual Conference. Our next session will be Meta Governance, a government layer for online communities. I'll turn it over to you, Joshua and Seth, to introduce yourselves and begin your session. Hi there. Uh, my name is Seth Fry. I'm a professor at UC Davis uh, in communication department. My specialty is computational social science, uh, studying self-governance and online communities from a data science perspective. I'm here uh, mainly to introduce uh, Joshua Tan. Josh is a doctoral student with affiliations at Oxford and uh, ha Harvard and also MIT in there. I always lose track, Joshua. Uh, Joshua has been the lead on the MetaGov project, which is building a governance layer for the internet. Uh, and he's been a close collaborator of mine, and I'm very happy to uh, uh, introduce him all to you. Awesome. Thanks, Seth. Um, to be clear, I do not presently have an MIT affiliation, nor do I presently have an Harvard affiliation. So, you know, if I'm doing terrible things that you can only blame Oxford. Uh, okay, let me see if, how the internet works today. Does it work? Does it work? All right. All right, I'm really hoping this works. <laughs> All right, hopefully everybody can see this. Um, so yeah, I'll just give a kind of a short intro uh, presentation to what we're doing at the Meta Governance Project and what exactly we mean by governance layer for the internet. Um, but of course, this uh, if you guys are looking at this, your schedules, uh, you'll notice that there's a subsequent workshop uh, I think called like governance layers meet community rule and policy kit, which is all part of the same project. So we really encourage you after listening to this talk and maybe asking some questions to jump into that workshop and participate in those further discussions and sort of um, really dig into the, uh, the substance of the project. Uh, okay, so I'm here for some summary summarization. Uh, first, I just wanna start off by saying that uh, <laughs> This is a collaboration between a truly incredible group of collaborators and that I'm uh, truly honored to be working to be one among them. Um, so yeah, Prima, and I'll go over the names later. Um, so just to summarize, Medigov in a single sentence. Uh, Medigov is a tool to explore the design space of institutions. Now, uh, that may or may not make sense to you depending on your background. So I thought I'd just follow up with a little story about how I got introduced to Medigov. So I'm a mathematician and I mostly do this part of math called category theory. And one day I walk into this conference that truly has absolutely nothing to do with category theory. And I meet this guy named Larry, who's a constitutional law professor in Boston. And Larry and I start talking about this game he's working on called Seed, which sounds cool. I love video games, uh, but I'm a mathematician and you know, this, th I don't really think about it. Until a few months later, when this company called Improbable reaches out to me about uh, some sort of database thing, and I find out that they're developing technology for that very same game. So at this point, I'm kind of curious. Maybe there's some math involved. Uh, long story short, I reach out to the guys developing this game, a kind of free uh, seed, and I end up helping them design their economy. Now, a bunch of things happen. I somehow end up in law school for a bit. And today I'm working with Larry, Nathan, Amy, Seth, Prima, and many others on a project called the Meta Governance Project. And one of the goals of that project is to design the politics, the politics of Seed, uh, but also of many other platforms, platforms from blockchain DAOs to online professional guilds to social networks. And I'll go over that seed example later to give you kind of an illustration, but I tell this story to make a point. People usually imagine governance as something about centralized control, something that governments do. Metagov, like the things it's trying to work on, is very much a bottom-up collaboration, one that has brought together people working in truly very disparate corners of the web. It's grounded in experimentation. It's built on top of, or underneath, uh, the experiments that people are actually already doing online. And I have no idea who is here in this little virtual space we got going on here, but I figured you all might be exactly this kind of people who can appreciate that kind of experimentation. So anyways, end of story. And let's go back to the basics. Medigov, the thing we're building, is a piece of software. And what Medigov does 
as software is it takes this input, an online community, plus some simple code modules, and produces as output a governance system for that community. In effect, Medigov makes it easier for online communities to build their own governance systems and thus to govern themselves. Uh, or at least that's the intended behavior. But before I talk about how the software works, uh, I just want to make sure that you understand what a governance system actually is, because if you understand what a governance system is, you will immediately understand why it's a huge problem to build one. So the first point, governance systems are incredibly complex. So here's an example of a two-person governance system uh, that I'm sure many of you are familiar with, uh, the prisoner's dilemma. So two prisoners can remain silent or defect. If they both remain silent, the police get nothing and they walk away with relatively little jail time. I think in this case, it's uh, they both serve one year. Uh, but if, just, uh, if they both defect, they both end up in jail for a much longer period of time. But if just one person defects and the other remains silent, then the betrayer is rewarded. So there's an incentive to defect. Analogously, if you try to make reasoned arguments on Facebook while your opponent tells outrageous lies, then you better start lying as well because the game of Facebook rewards lying. You might think then, okay, looking at this, uh, this slide, uh, well, it's a matrix, simple enough. How hard could governance be? Just change the values of the matrix. But how could that game be different? And why couldn't it have been any of these other two player games? And here I'm cribbing from something, some stuff that Seth has written. And people have written PhDs and won Nobel Prizes trying to figure out that problem. How do we get out of the local minima that arise in collective action problems? And that problem is hard because it's not just a matter of changing the payoffs, but understanding how those payoffs arise from the architecture of the game. So in the case of Facebook, this means the architecture or the code of Facebook, but also the laws of Facebook and the norms of Facebook communities. For the engineers here, governance is one of those quintessential system of system problems. And to be clear, if you're an online platform, you need governance. Uh, more governance correlates directly with more success. Uh, now, this graphic is research done by Seth himself and his collaborator, uh, and it tells the story of how over 6,000 different Minecraft servers, the ones that were truly succeeded, or at least that we can tell, were the ones that installed more governance systems and implemented more rules. Uh, the problem, of course, is that as you add more rules, your system becomes exponentially harder to model and to design. Now, these rules work on two levels. Uh, you need to punish the bad, of course, uh, but rules also foster community. Uh, for websites and platforms, that equates to increasing retention and engagement. Uh, for example, in the game EVE Online, uh, this is not a steal from the actual uh, game, I've come to realize, uh, players involved in online guilds called corporations in EVE spent almost twice as much daily time and stuck around much longer than people not involved in a corporation. And the same is true across a slew of different online games from World of Warcraft to Fortnite to smaller indie titles like uh, Realm of the Bad Gods. Uh, the examples of these games, Minecraft and EVE Online, uh, teach us a lesson. Governments and platforms, also known as kind of central regulators, are not the only ones that have to design governance systems. Every community, every chat group, and online guild has to do it. And, real, and these people, these communities, rarely have the resources of a central authority like Facebook or the US government. And they're certainly underserved by existing tools. The picture here um, uh, is depicts an example of this problem, one that um, some of the collaborators, especially Nathan, uh, who you'll hear from in the workshop, is working on right now, namely the governance problems of the many mutual aid groups that emerged in response to COVID-19. Uh, the problem in these cases is that there really is no one optimal way to run such a group. There's no one online tool or one organizational setup. There's really a vast range and variety of different kinds of examples. So to summarize the problems, governance is really complex. Governance complexity is a barrier to platform growth. And governance is also a huge problem for communities themselves. So what can we do about these problems? Now, earlier I said that Medigov was software that, given an online community and some code, would produce a governance system for that community. And I want to be clear that the software is not just a, some, it's not some magical AI system that will produce optimal governance solutions. People still have to build their own governance systems. What Medigov does is it fills a gap 
between three existing governance processes. So you have in your bottom right, top-down regulation for platforms. On your bottom left, you have bottom-up fixes coming from users. And what we're trying to do is synthesize, synthesize those different governance problems from these two perspectives and present them as governance opportunities to developers and to scientists who can then build co-based solutions for platforms in collaboration with users. The design of the Metagraph stack uh, kind of reflects this approach. On the top layer is a governance editor designed for end users. The middle layer is a kind of computational agreement engine that runs the code. And the bottom layer is a protocol and data model that abstracts over the governance entities and operations across a range of different platforms. Uh, so in effect, what we're doing uh, is providing the digital infrastructure. And once again, this is very much an infrastructure project to allow people to engineer and operate and experiment with governance systems for any online platform, social, whether it be social network, blockchain, online game, or a messenger service. Uh, and hopefully you'll see later, we're kind of developing that infrastructure directly with partners through, the, uh, through use cases. So as I mentioned before, uh, uh, well, uh, we're working with this game called Seed. And I want to just give you a flavor of what these more abstract protocols and sort of like software infrastructure would look like. So Seed, is a massively multiplayer sandbox simulation. And in C, the players control a number of different avatars called ceilings who can kind of do all the things that you and I do. They can form businesses, make money, have children, vote. Uh, and to quote their CEO, uh, they want players in C to experience a world with a huge range of different kinds of politics. So they want to see constitutional democracies, medieval monarchies, corporate dictatorships, and 70s style communes all merging out of player to player interactions. So the vision of C is to build a kind of simulation of actual society with all its social complexities. And what the guys who are developing it are doing, they're all EVE Online veterans. And with C, they're placing a bet on the community building and politics that made EVE so successful and so dynamic. And Medigov, what I've been talking about this technology, is a core part of that experience insofar as it's designed to make it possible for players to form and create all these different governance systems and scenarios and the nice thing is that people are actually already building these governance system. It's already happening. So, uh, wait, what that just happened? Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I just kind of slipped a slide. Um, so players are already building these governance system and it's already happening. And this is what you see here is just a selection of the nations, corporations, and factions that are already emerging in that Steve community in particular on their discord. So uh, the project here that I described, the meta-governance project, is very much a research collaboration. And I figure the people here um, probably would consider this the most exciting stuff, basically an opportunity to dig into the substance of what we're actually working on. Uh, to which I say, um, maybe not in the 30 minutes we have here, but definitely come to the workshop where we'll have literally three times as much time to discuss and really delve into the details. Um, but here I wanted to sort of just give a kind of a quick overview of what that research agenda looks like uh, and sort of uh, offer some basis for questions. So the white paper or the research paper that Seth, myself, Nathan, and others have put out uh, called Modular Politics Toward a Governance Layer for Online Communities. Um, I think of that as really emerging from kind of this, we had these separate research questions about uh, let's say governance in general and the project of that paper or one of the projects uh, aspects of that paper is to convert those governance questions, those social science questions into software engineering requirements, namely things like modularity, interoperability, and portability. Um, I really encourage you to sort of take a look at the paper itself where it goes through uh, several examples of what exactly we mean by each of these things. Um, but it's kind of like modular politics takes this high level view of uh, what governance is uh, so, and I mentioned, as I mentioned before, Metagov is a kind of tool to explore this design space of institutions. But sort of the next steps after modular politics um, is this more low-level representation where we're really thinking about this, this perspective around the software engineering of games. This is something that Seth and I have been working on quite closely. Um, and in this perspective, Metagov is more of a protocol, uh, where it's very specifically a protocol for composing small games into bigger games, where games here were kind of substituting for institution. 
Uh, and the activities that are associated with each of these activities, uh, so the idea that's a protocol, the idea with the composing things, you could think of as a combination of software design. Uh, so that's kind of where I am a little bit more involved, as well as mathematical research that's specking out the underlying mechanics or ideas of, that, uh, of the software. There's community research and engagement, basically looking around all the examples that exist on the internet today and trying to sort of suss out what are some of the core modules or sort of governance dimensions that people are already working on. And then once we have all this together to actually run some experiments to see, especially for through examples like C, but also through social networks like Vingo and um, uh, uh, blockchain frameworks like DAOStack to try to actually see how people engage with these tools and whether they're coming up with new kinds of governance systems. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, community rule is one of the examples with this that you would get to play with uh, um, in the next, uh, in the workshop. Um, we're also thinking more kind of holistically. Uh, so this is something that Larry put together about what the stages of governance might look like in an online context. Now this is very much geared toward kind of a game-like setting. But we believe that aspects of this uh, certainly correspond to um, things that you might see even in a social network or a community Slack. And just the last point. Uh, so I earlier in the presentation, I flashed up a picture of this lady whose name is Eleanor Ostrom, the founder of the Ostrom Workshop at the University of Indiana. Um, and I would say the modular politics and by extension, this entire research project is very much a descendant of that line of inquiry, which is based around this idea that experiments in self-governance work. As in, you go into different uh, local communities and you see what they do. And this is where uh, a lot of sort of exciting activities and exciting discoveries in governance are actually happening down on the ground. So the question I have for you, and that's where I post myself on a daily basis, is how can we develop this logic and lift it to the online world. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it for me. I look forward to uh, seeing your responses and discussions in the workshop, and I guess here. All right, uh, thank you very much, Josh. Um, I wish we could give him a hand, but I don't know how that works in this text <laughs> on this kind of platform. Um, uh, let me pull up our questions. Um, I've got uh, the first question is from Fred. It's about the Minecraft study. Did the Minecraft servers actually see a growth uh, because they had stronger governance? Um, did the study determine a causal link? Uh, you know, or could it be the other way around, essentially, that um, success or growth caused governance? Um, uh, I'm moderator. I'm not supposed to take stuff. questions. <laughs> yeah, but it was my study. Really co um, this. <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, the the study was not a randomized experiment, so we, we can't. There's no formal causal link. Um, however, in the game, so there's a there's a logical argument for causality. I've got current work establishing a causal link uh, more rigorously um, with some causal inference techniques that let you fake an experiment. Absent that, what you have to do is you have to make an assumption. You have to assume, um, in this case, that the that a bunch of um, people who aren't coordinating, who don't have a social contract, who are anonymous and immature, uh, when put into a, a, a commons uh, environment, will um, create a tragedy of the commons. So if you kind of trust the, the logic of the, of the basic tragedy of the commons, you know, no institutions, no cooperation, no special stuff, just the basics, um, then, your, then the most likely explanation is that um, governance caused success and not the other way around, not success causing governance. Uh, that said, it's important always to leave room for doubt uh, and, uh, and I can't fail to allow the possibility of the other explanation. It's good, to, it's good that you called that out. Uh, our next, uh, hopefully that answers it. I wish I could get some feedback from uh, from our, our question answers. But I'm going through um, a sort of a little bit of a circuitous path to get your questions. Our second question is from Andrew. Oh, but Fred, you're welcome to follow up if you have any more. Uh, our next question is from Andrew. Uh, what kinds of differences and similarities are there for governance tools used by an online community versus the real world? Josh, do you want to take that? Sure. Um, I guess I live in a kind of weird part of the world. So I, um, 
I do a lot of work with like cities, for example, um, architecting decision support systems for them and particularly like for smart cities, right? And from that perspective, I sometimes don't see all that much of a difference between let's say the, um, the governance tools that we might sort of like care about from an online perspective and the governance uh, questions that arise um, in these real world settings, right? Um, because from the perspective of the tools, they're actually quite related. I'm crystal good. Um, Social media senator. That said, for the digital I think district of certainly in the online setting, there's this thing called made code up, but or architecture, totally real office. right? Um, and that plays a big role PC that doesn't quite exist in the way sort of we expect um, or Facebook in the sort of idealized context in an Jack offline Squat setting. From Apathy, West uh, furthermore, and I would say that a lot of, like, especially in these online, like, online only settings, where you're thinking like sort of decentralized of autonomous organizations, media these online games, or even just like platforms like Lumio, there are kind of more proposal systems. The, lens of uh, the things that you can do quantum politics um, looks at the are absolutely they're determined by my next uh, election will be held by, a by the structure voting. of the platform. Uh, the way that lawyers who know better, decisions. more about this than I do, sort of explain it to me is um, in the offline world, governance is very much, it's very often like a kind of like a, kind of you're allowed to do, you can, you can kind of do whatever you want in the physical world and governance and government kind of restricts you from doing it. Uh, contracts and laws restrict you from doing these things. It's not always true, but it kind of like a general rule of thumb. But in an online system, you're much, we you're literally given and permission and to do certain things Democrat because unless somebody gives like you a tool to, that lets you do something, you literally Social can't do it. Senator you just can't interact with that system. Of West Virginia is real. So that's Senators one Senator. sense in which governance And now that I'm an elected uh, official in the United States of America, no, people ask me, answers. what have you done, Senator? Oh, uh, well, said, well I don't have to do key reasonable people could disagree. My inclination is that if you have the same kind of person facing the same kind of incentives in the same kind of uh, context, then you're going to get the same kind of behavior. I think it's very possible to investigate online systems in a way that the insights do not generalize to anything besides that system. Um, and I also think it is possible. I think it depends a lot on, on your question and being very careful about what question you're asking. Um, in my case, I was studying a system that looks a lot like the Lord of the Flies. And, and the Lord of the Flies, as a, as a work of political philosophy, makes a prediction that, that um, a none you know, the young males um, can't succeed at governance. So it's a challenging environment to see success. That's actually why I chose Minecraft. If you see successful governance there, um, there's, a, there's a bit of an argument that maybe these are general lessons because that's an especially difficult domain, no matter uh, uh, in any in any context. Um, so yeah, I just have to give the unfortunate, very uh, scientist answer. For the many places across the globe. Who um, great question. Thank you very much. I'm going to move along to AXO. Uh, what are the strategies to get these better governance systems into the real world governance um, on a corporate or societal level? Um, so I guess first I should sort of be clear. Um, the project itself, the meta governance project is very much, it's um, laser focus on online communities, right? Um, and whether or not it works in, let's say, a real world corporate governance is like a much later research project. And I, I think I would be doing this project a service if I like said it had any sort of presumption about how that would, should happen. But I think um, part of the questions here are certainly, as I mentioned before, they're inspired by um, kind of an Ostrom type perspective um, about uh, sort of how we sort of design institutions. And in particular, sort of the idea of modular politics, uh, the white paper kind of is articulating this idea that governance maybe actually is one of those kinds of things or activities that can be broken up into relatively sort of reasonable chunks, right? Maybe that's not what we see in the real world, but maybe it's actually possible if we sort of throw, uh, engage with it kind of through the, using the tools of computer science and software engineering. So from that perspective, uh, if we can find these different sort of like modules or building blocks of governance, uh, and we can sort of like, and these, when we can verify that these building blocks are truly kind of robust, then I think um, that could more easily translate into a real world, uh, real world governance, whether at the corporate or the social level. Um, so it's really about like, I guess the strategy here is just 
noticing and verifying what are these actual building blocks and how do we sort of like combine these building blocks into in order to recover the institutional diversity that exists online for us. Uh, but eventually, if it can recover that online, so it can span that sort of space of uh, design space of institutions online, then maybe it can also do the same thing for an offline sort of uh, institutions. Uh, thank you. Um, I can add to that on the, I was trained as an experimentalist. So my answer is always going to be um, the best way to do, to build design governance systems and to understand governance design online or offline is going to be to run experiments. Now, experiments usually run at the level of the person. And if our questions are about people, that's great, but our questions are about governance. And so we should be able to do experiments at that scale. That's really hard in the real world context. Um, we can't just spin off countries like nothing. It's slightly less hard in the online space. And that's why I've invested so much in the online space and so involved in Medigov um, is that it's really a platform to build thousands of government governance experiments that are comparable. And it's the beginning of the kind of experimental work that will be necessary to produce a science of self-governance. Um, moving down, we have a question. Hey, Josh, great talk. How do you see governance playing out in decentralized networks? Could you speak about your work with decentralized blockchains? Uh, this is taking the, this is uh, going from Medigov instead of from the real world to the other direction, blockchain. Yes, other direction. Um, I am actually really excited by some of the experiments that are being run in kind of in like the DAO community um, on blockchains. And one example of this um, is uh, for, actually for just to give an example um, is a system called SourceCred. Uh, hopefully we'll have a opportunity to sort of share that later. But SourceCred is kind of like a system that, um, which is currently being experimented on um, in an open source software sort of environment, but also they're trying to export some of that to the blockchain. Um, and there it's a really interesting example where there's kind of, um, how do I say it? So SourceCred is, uh, and I don't know if I can do this in one sentence, it's a system that basically, uh, it's kind of like a really evolved reputation system that's based on a certain kind of data structure called a contribution graph. Um, so it takes all the things that could matter to your project from GitHub, GitHub commits to sort of like just forum posts and Discord chats and kind of assigns a value to each one, which is really cool, right? Uh, so this is a kind of an ex example of an experiment but SourceCred is something that gets defined on individual platforms or individual communities. And kind of this, let's say this meta approach or meta perspective is, okay, so if I have an instance of this sort of, uh, let's say governance system uh, that exists on one sort of um, like DAO, let's say, or one sort of Discord community, how do I sort of like merge or sort of think about uh, the boundaries? How do I think about the interaction uh, between different instances of the same governance system, right? Because if you want to sort of scale up this kind of, let's say software-based uh, solution to uh, so software-based governance module, you really need to think about like, how do I, uh, how like the interactions over these different instances. And for that, you need to kind of take a meta perspective. So they're talking about things like Metacrit. I feel like that's very much, um, well, I mean, that literally is the question I think about like from a mathematical perspective. It's one of the things that uh, I think we're really excited about engaging with as part of the Meta Governance Project. Uh, so Grace asks, how does a group in the MG platform uh, reach an agreement? Are those for conversations, discussions, a culture? So the entire idea is that um, we don't define this. Um, we don't define like exactly how they reach an agreement. Uh, we don't define the specific tools of how they're supposed to have conversations. It's more that this is like kind of um, a system that allows you to like, you can have, let's say like a Discord chat, which has certain sort of like, it's designed a certain way. You could have a Slack chat, you could have a WhatsApp group. These are all the different manifold options for you, for people to kind of engage each other in, let's say a collective decision-making or just conversation in order to come to agreements. And this kind of forms this like constitutional space in which people sort of get together online. And what we're saying is that this constitutional space is like, there's a lot of stuff out there, uh, but there's no kind of like system or rigor with which we're designing and thinking about how these spaces come about. Um, they're just like kind of there because the platforms offer them. And there's no really good way to kind of evolve or modify them um, uh, as communities change. So the system is kind of designed, the, the Medigov system is designed to kind of like go underneath 
these um, these settings and allow people to kind of vary their constitutional space um, iteratively um, by changing different modules that they're using, changing the parameters of difference for these kind of like conversational spaces, essentially just like chat rooms uh, that give rise to hopefully different kinds of uh, communities. And let's say communities that are capable uh, or good at different kinds of things. So um, uh, Josh and I, uh, we are we have several collaborators, and two of them are starting at 11:30 at right now. Part of the idea for this uh, time, this space right here, was to create a little bit of a funnel uh, for that workshop, which is designed uh, for uh, for these questions. Um, and so what we were thinking is to move over that workshop. The other workshop happening right now is governance layers, meet community rule and policy kit, which are two, um, we'll say early kind of parallel projects that are helping us articulate Medigov to ourselves. Um, the hosts there being Nathan Schneider and Amy Zhang, I believe. Um, that said, we do have quite a few questions left. Uh, Josh, what do you say to this? How about you go over to um, uh, governance layers. I'll stay mm -hmm. here and wrap up the question queue. Um, uh, and then uh, then I'll head over as well. Yeah, sounds okay, good. Okay, fantastic. All right, thanks. All right, so, so thanks for Oh, let, let's give Josh a hand, even though we're all, <laughs> we're all alone in our rooms and no one can hear anybody. All right. Oh, I feel so connected to the universe. <laughs> all, all right, right. see you soon. See you soon. Let's see, so uh, Colton asks if we can explicate the governance journey map in more detail. We mentioned it's geared towards online communities, so how do we alter it for the real world? Uh, we're really um, trying to go one step at a time. It's important to pick a project that's tractable, right? That, that, um, that we believe we can solve. And already to, to, say, to say we're designing a general governance system for online communities is um, absurd, it, it, like it's way too, that's way too big to, to chew off. So our, our inclination is um, come up with something we don't hate for the online space before we even think about growing larger. At the end of the day, um, uh, both me and um, at least one other uh, um, lead in the Medigo project, we cut our teeth in real world organizing. I was a, a, an organizer of business cooperatives for 10 years, housing cooperatives, self-governing, um, residences. Uh, and so, you know, I, my, my core interest is humans. I'm not interested in studying, you know, gamers or online uh, uh, browsers and roamers. I want to study humans. I want to develop tools for humans, for human communities in the real world, ultimately. Um, but I, you know, I'm aware of my limits. And so that's why we've scoped Medigov so narrowly uh, in these first couple of years to the online space where we'll be able to ask questions and answer them instead of just being stuck with the same questions we started with for, for however long we go. Um, Joe asks, is uh, um, community rule is open to any online community, but the rest of the stack requires a deeper level of integration with social platforms. What's the roadmap there? Uh, actually, Joe, you should head right over to, um, uh, to governance layers. Uh, because Policy Kit by Amy Zhang being presented at that workshop right now um, uh, has an architecture for this that, that we're, uh, we're going to see how that plays out um, as that uh, matures and, and gets released and gets used. Um, and that's a, turning into a sort of first stab at this implementation question, which is, <laughs> which is a really good question. Um, uh, Maria asks, would a bottom-up system still need a central regulator? Is the smart city level scalable? Um, well, that's sort of a, there's two ways to approach that. Um, one is to uh, give an opinion. That, I mean, that, that question, does a bottom-up system still need a central regulator? You could go ahead and call that one of the, the most important questions of political philosophy. And so um, like any important question in political philosophy, you'll get um, a, a good answer from a lot of the people you ask, and those answers will all be totally different. Uh, what's important to me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a researcher and I want answers, um, uh, is to um, create a system that makes it possible to ask that same question everyone else has asked, but in a way that we're actually able to answer it. Um, my ideology actually a little bit 
I, I personally kind of um, shy away from extreme decentralization. I'm sort of a skeptic. My experience with very decentralized real world systems kind of gave me a little bit of a, a, a appreciation for um, uh, <laughs> hierarchy that, that people put upon themselves, leaders that people put above themselves, but some kind of central. So uh, I, I, I hear a little bit of a suspicion um, in your question that some kind of central uh, authority uh, is necessary. Um, but you know what? I'm, I don't want to take a strong stance on that. I, I want a, uh, an environment. I want the data to tell me. And um, one thing that makes me excited about Medigub uh, is uh, is its potential to, to give us data on that type of question. Um, Araz asks, right now, the focus is on users and rules. But what about the effect of the process? How will you capture that? Um, let's see. So uh, you're absolutely right. Um, what we can do is distinguish two types of rules. There's rules that regulate behavior, do this, don't do this. And then there's rules that create institutional structure, essentially rules that create process. So, um, so I'm sort of unasking your question. Yes, we're focused on rules, um, but we're defining rules in a way that accounts for process. We're fundamentally more interested in process than anything. We want um, a process people can go through to build processes that produce rules. Uh, to put that another way, we want a, a piece of software people can use to develop uh, um, an institutional structure that that can be changed and improved and fixed and modeled by the people, by its own stakeholders. Um, and so uh, the rules should be the very, very last thing that happens. What we're setting up is a process that enables people to, to create any kind of rule system by any type of process they want. Now, that's a really tall order, um, uh, but we've, uh, uh, um, but you know, we're working hard and we're very excited and we've already learned a lot. So, um, uh, uh, a failure can only be good uh, with all that uh, we've learned so far. So that's all of our questions. Um, thank you very much. I'm heading over to um, governance layers uh, with Community Rule and Policy Kit by Nathan Schneider and uh, Amy Zhang. Uh, thank you for being with us. Um, I wish I could uh, see you to thank you. Um, but uh, And I'm looking forward to more of your questions over there. Uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.